Hi, in this series of tutorials, I'll be demonstrating how to use VTK visualization toolkits for processing scientific data in Python. So VTK is an excellent uh, set of libraries or you know, software for processing scientific data, whether that's mesh-based data, particle-based data, discrete, uh, no, discrete or mesh-based, and also for visualization of data. So, uh, so the software package Paviu that we've been using in these sets of tutorials is ba built based on VTK. So pretty much most of the filters or the things you can do in Paviu, uh, you can also call them in VTK and do them automatically in a Python script. Okay. So you know we'll be mainly covering or pretty much just covering how to process data with VTK, but you can also write applications that, that use VTK for visualization. We will not focus on visualization because we can always do our stuff in Python, um, save it as VTK, and then let Paviu do the visualization for us. But if you're interested in building your own applications, you can also use visualization capabilities in VTK. Okay, so if you come to vtk.org, the VTK website, you uh, will, uh, you know, under uh, Resources, you can access examples. So you can see examples in different languages. So you can either write VTK codes in C++ Python. So for example, if you click on Python, you can see all sets of, you know, pretty much most of the functionalities that you can use here. And each of them, if you click, you can see example VTK codes. So in my opinion, this is the best way to use VTK is to learn uh, by examples. That's how I learned how to work with VTK. And here, hopefully, you'll find many of the useful features that you'll need, um, those that at least are not covered in our tutorials. And then let's say there's something specific that you'd like more information, you can, uh, you know, access its uh, uh, web page, its main web page. So let's say if I search VTK gradient filter, uh, then I can go to VTK gradient filter class, and then here I can find uh, you know all the options for VTK gradient filters, so like calculating curl or divergence, and I can also find uh, documentations, and also I can find test cases here. Which if I click here, I can find sample codes. So you can by searching the name of every class or every filter, you can find you know a detailed documentation for the different options within that. Okay. So now. Um, a great resource that I like with for VTK is VMTK, Vascular Modeling Toolkit. So this is a popular open source software for processing uh, cardiovascular data, but really you can use it for any tubular like geometries. So you know doing things like calculating center lines or all sorts of different data processing. What I like about VMTK is that if you download it, you'll be able to access all of its Python codes, and those are excellent sets of examples of how you do advanced data processing in a Python VTK. So that's actually how I learned to do some of the things that I'm going to be doing here. So if there's something that uh, I'm not covering, there's a good chance that if you download the MTK, go to the source code, look at all the Python functions that are there, there's a good chance you'll find a sample code there that you can use. And also, uh, my friend and colleague, Always, has this great GitHub uh, uh, directory where you can find in some of his repositories, like Smascular tools or image analysis tools, some great sample VTK uh, codes. And finally, the data that I'll be working with, I'll provide a link to the data. But if you like to see more VTK type data, if you go to Smascular website and click on the repository, you will go to the new Cmascular model repository where you will be able to access all this uh, uh, vascular CFD data. So you can if you click on each of them. For most of them, there will be simulation results also available that you can load and work with in Paraview or do VTK processing on it. Okay. Okay, great. So now let's get into our code. So this is the code that I've uh, included here for this demonstration purpose. Um, so what we do is that after you install VTK, let's say with Conda or PIP, you can import it here to a Python. And this is the function that I'll be talking about today. So at the bottom here, I set the input file. I set the output that I'd like to save after doing my processing. And also the field name for the variable that I'd like to read, which is pressure. So if I look at my input file, so this is my input file, similar thing we've seen in a uh, 
previous sets of tutorials. Uh, so this uh, is a cracked artery. And uh, if you look under in informational properties, you can see all these arrays available to us. So I'm specifically going to do some processing on pressure. So I'll, I'm gonna call for pressure. So you can, in Python MDK, you can read any of these arrays, velocity, wall issue, stress, pressure, traction, all these things that are available here and do process there. Okay, great. So what I do here is at first I need to load the data. So I'm gonna call VTK XML unstructured grid reader, call that reader. And XML unstructured grid reader is for reading .vtu files. If you have a .vtk file, you just need to remove the XML part. So I've commented that part here too. So I call that my reader. Then for reader, I set a file name, which is the input file name I've specified below. I update it. So when I update it, the reader gets executed and I can get the output, store it in data. So data now is like a data structure that contains my VTK file that I read. So now I want to do a bunch of things to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the surface. So the file that I read was a 3D volumetric tetrahedral mesh. I want to just extract the surface of that to get the surface triangulated mesh. So I call the data BTK data set surface filter. I'm going to call that mesh to surf. And I'll set an input data for that, which is the data that I've read here. That's called data. I execute, it, execute that by calling that update. And then I get the output and I store it on data. So note here that I'm storing it on data again. So what happens here, I'm going to overwrite. So at this point, data is just the surface mesh. I no longer have a volumetric Mesh. If you don't like the overwrite, you can call this, you know, another name, data two, for example. Okay. Then what I'm going to do now that I have a surface mesh, something that's pretty useful in many of the things that we do is calculating the surface normals, the normal vectors on the surface. So here I call VTK poly data normals. I set the input data, which is my surface mesh. I set some options and I update the normals and I store the output again on data. So now I'm going to have the normal vectors. And if you like to have to normals to be flipped, whether they're by default, they're going to be inward. But if you like them to be outward, there's also an option that you can specify. Then I read, I get the number of points. So I know how many points my surface mesh has. I can print that. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to read my uh, pressure. So field name here is the pressure, which is you know, it's what under information you can see that you have access to. So you have access to all these data arrays. One of them is pressure. So I'm going to use my data, get this point data, get array field name. So I do get point data because this is a point based data. If it was an element based data, you'll need to do get cell data, I believe. And then the array that you get as a result of this command here is going to be a BTK array, but we'd like to process our data in Python. So I'm going to come, con I need to convert that to NumPy and I can easily do that by calling from BTK utilities, importing NumPy support. So here I import NumPy support, I name it VN and then VN.BTK to NumPy will convert the output of this, which is the pressure in BTK array to a NumPy array and I return it to P. So now P is my pressure data in a NumPy array, and I can do you know, anything in Python to it easily. So what I do is that I'm going to define a new uh, variable, pdyne, and just, a, you know, just something to test. And I'll initial, initialize this based on the size. I know the number of points. And you know, just, just for demonstration purposes, I loop over all the points in my mesh. I take the pressure that I read, and you know, just raise it to power two and store it in my new array. You, know, you can do anything you like here. You can calculate square root. You can do you know, any kinds of mathematical operations you like on your data and then store the output. So here I'm just taking a square. Okay, now I have this new array p time, which is in NumPy. And I want to restore it back to VTK because I want to, again, save my output as a VTK file so I can visualize it in parallel. So now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to use NumPy to VTK. So I convert this p time to a VTK structure array. So I call that theta VTK. And now I need to set a name for it. And that name is the name that will appear here in Paraview when you open your file, open the new file. I'm going to just call that P squared. And then I have my data structure that I've been working with. And I add this to the data structure. So I'm going to retain what I've already had. I'm just going to add this new array called that I called P squared to it. And just for further demonstrations, I can do other things as well. I can 
do, for example, I can crop my data, clip it with a clip. Uh, so I can define a plane. Here I'm defining a VTK plane by defining the origin and the normal vector. And then I can use VTK clip poly data. I call that clipper. I set input data, which is my data structure. I set the plane that I defined, plane one. You can set whether you like to clip you know, which side of the plane, basically inside out, but basically by setting this on or off. So inside out on or inside out off will be one side or the other side of the plane, which is you're gonna keep and you're gonna discard the, the other half. Um, and then you update it and then you get the output. I'm gonna call the output here data clipped. You don't necessarily, just to show you that you don't necessarily need to override it every time. If you, you know, if there's a reason you can you know, store it as in a new data to keep both data structures. Then finally, what I'd like to do is that I'd like to save the final outcome. So I'm gonna call VTK XML data set writer, define this, call it my output, set the input data that I'd like to write this data clipped, give it a file name, which I defined down here, and then write it. Okay, perfect. So now let's go to Paview. Let me take what I have created here and load it into Paview. What you're gonna see is that normally you, your file will be just, you know, loaded, but here I'm getting some weird message that asks me for the reader. And the reason for this is that I believe I'm using the Pyview version that I'm using is not compatible with the VTK library that I have installed on my Python. So it doesn't automatically recognize the, the file type. So I have to come down here and select the, in this case, XML polydata reader. So I select that. Now I can load my file, apply. So this is the file that I get, okay? So let me just, show you the solid field. So you can see I've extracted the surface mesh. So I can do surface with edges to see the surface mesh. So you can see the data is not um, uh, 3D because I did extract surface. And you can also see that it doesn't contain the entire data that I started with because I you know, used a clip with a plane to crop this. Okay, now what do I have from this if I, uh, if I, go under information, you can see that I have added two things to this data structure. One is P squared, which I can visualize here by selecting pressure squared. So this is my pressure squared, okay? And then another thing I added was the normals vector. So the normals, to see them, you need to, their vector, they all have normalized vectors. So you just need to do a glyph and select your orientation array to be normals. The scale array, you can just turn that off. And now if you do that, you can see that you have uh, these normal vectors that are produced here. So these are the normal inboard vectors created at every node of your uh, mesh, okay? So I have these normal vectors if I like to use them for some purposes. And we'll, I'll provide examples of how we use that later, okay? So uh, this was the first example, and uh, we will continue with more examples, and you can Play with this code, you can modify it. Again, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to do VTK processing is to see a sample code, take that sample code, understand how it works, and then build from there and do what you'd like to do, customize it, add more features to it. So now you'll see, for example, how you can use VTK functionality. You call a VTK class, you set an input, you set an options, you update it, and you get the output. And if there's an array associated with that, you can convert it to NumPy, do things with it and convert back and forth between NumPy and VTK, okay?